and welcome to our latest episode of the Insights interview series. And as you know, we chat to people who are doing fantastic things with engagement. Um, and we've been running this series since 2019. And obviously, um, as you know, the last probably four or five we've been doing via Zoom because we are in a, a different environment. But I'm thrilled to have someone that we have been working with for far longer um, is Robin Moore who um, many of you will know Robin's voice from Blinky Bill, um, from the Spray and Wipe ad. You may have even seen Robin speak at a conference because she certainly is one of Australia's most in-demand keynote speakers. And I had the absolute pleasure of working with Robin when I was at Make-A-Wish and, um, and she's still patron of Make-A-Wish and I think has been a volunteer for 25 years, Robin, is that right? 27 now, 27. the time goes so quickly, Georgie. Oh gosh. I feel like this year's got to have about 17 years packed in. <laughs> I know. I'll be white by the end of this year, I tell you. <laughs> um, and Robin, uh, as I said, if you've seen Robin talk in um, at a conference or you may have watched the video that we sent out recently that she kindly released the webinar for everyone to to watch called The Power of the Word. And, and Robin does amazing work around how strong language is and what it means to engage. And um, I thought... Who else, you know, who better to speak to during this time when and when language is so important? Um, so thank you, Robin, for joining us all the way from lovely Hobart. Oh, that's my pleasure. What a lovely place to uh, be isolated in Hobart. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, so I thought, Robin, do you want to tell us a bit about what the power of the word is and what it means? Yes, well, a lot of people might hear the power of the word and think that it's all that lip flapping, blah, 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 blah stuff. But um, I've been an educator and a voiceover artist and a speaker for about 48 years you know, over my lifetime. And um, I'm really, really connected with this beautiful uh, power that words have in specific situations. I mean, the word can evoke, it can persuade, sell, grow, heal. It can empower, encourage, inspire. And it also can totally kill people. It can, it can destroy, it can hurt, it can um, savage, it can maim, it can um, you know, undermine. It's such a, a, a fragile thing, this word. So I have great respect for the word and uh, honor it tremendously and love to tease out with audiences the power that we have to go on the, the bright side rather than the dark side. I mean, when I was little, we'd say, um, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. But back then we didn't have social media. We didn't have this, this tsunami of experiences coming at us and words in, in abundance. So um, I'm, I'm in love with um, inviting people into the power they have every day to actually say who they're going to, to be. This is a, an ontological discussion where you look at the nature of your very being. And uh, you know, if you look at all of the people who inspire us, like um, you know, Mother Teresa, no matter if you have a faith or not, you know, the world was inspired by her and she was probably being just one word, dignity. And she brought dignity to the dying and the destitute. Um, so she wasn't doing dignity, she was being it. And then her actions flowed from that. Um, you know, you look at Nelson Mandela, freedom, you know, um, uh, that one word had him inspire the entire world because he was, he was being it. So uh, that, those are the sort of conversations I love to conjure up and open up for people. And little children, you know, Georgie, are so quick at grabbing hold of that. I mean, yesterday I just did a, a book reading for little children in remote New South Wales. And, uh, and the children, you know, had been uh, looking at that webinar that you sent out and they, they were saying, I'm going to be love today. I'm going to be happiness. I'm going to be, you know, kindness. Um, they, they grab hold of these, this distinction so quickly. And that's such a good point um, because with, you know, that power and usually you would be flying all over the country and, yeah. the, and overseas, um, you know, talking to people about the power of the word. And, and I was lucky enough to see you talk at a national volunteering conference a few uh -huh. years ago in Canberra. And there was one thing that, it, a lot of what you talked about stood out, but one thing that has really stayed with me, you were talking about when we get, or on our way home, when we say, I'm tired. <laughs> and if we change it to, I'm tired, but I'm energised, or I'm tired, but I'm, 
fulfilled or you know whatever yeah. it was and there's so many times when I've been driving home from work exhausted or wherever or stressed but I've tried to bring that other word in yes and it's amazing how much it quickly shifts um how I'm feeling and I will excuse exactly. you know, in the joys of um us working from home we do have some road works that have just started up outside so if you oh. Really I'll, I'll have dogs. I'll have dogs <laughs> next door any moment, so don't worry. We'll be um, in a symphony. <laughs> exactly. Um, but it really was amazing how much just changing the way I looked at how I was feeling yeah. actually changed my mood and it was a different me that walked in the door. It wasn't sort of trudging in. It was, I'm tired, but I'm also this or I'm also that. Yes, and, and that's why I, you know, my company is called The Power of the Word, the power we have in our will. You know, it's an audacious act of the will to actually just flip over in one little second to being the word that you want to be. I mean, you know, in Australia, we have a lot of human doings, particularly in the leadership realm. And people get up and they work themselves into a lather, into a frenzy, and they're so busy doing and they do, 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 do so that they can have, have, have the results they want so that they can be who they want to be. But if we flip that around a little bit and we concentrate on who we're going to be when we start each day and then do from that, then we can have the results we want. So that tired, you know, and when I'm in schools, I always ask the, the students to hands up if your parents come home tired and angry. And all the hands go up. So we, we haven't just got the corona epidemic. We've got this, you know, par, par, parental epidemic at the moment called tired and angry parenting. Yeah. And um, so I say to the children, we'll just say to your parents, when they come home, before they take the key out of their pocket and stick it in the keyhole, say, who's coming home tonight? Mm -hmm. Now, tired is fine. We all want to be rid of tired I'm often tired, you know, when, when I was on 183 flights last year, I was so tired, it was only my makeup holding my face in, you know. Um, but tired is, is fine, you work hard, so you're tired. But the magical word is and, tired and happy, tired and grateful, tired and fun mum, tired and fun dad. You know, I had a woman in Melbourne recently ran out under the balcony at this conference and yelled out, I'm going to go home a better mother. Now, what had happened was in one second, she realised she could come home tired and maybe crazy mum or fun mum. And, and I've got millions of stories, you know, from people who just access that in a second. It's not rocket science. It's so accessible. Uh, I had a principal with a thousand kids in his school and he, in the morning, was a stressed and, you know, a tired and stressed principal. And he said to me at the end of the talk, um, I can't stay and talk. I'm going home to have a picnic in the backyard with my baby and my three-year-old. And I thought, wow, in one second, that beautiful man is no longer tired and stressed principal. He's tired and picnic dad. Yeah. You know, it's, it, I could go on and on and on. And the distinctions work for farmers who are, um, you know, stressed and suicidal sometimes um, and they can be stressed and in communication stressed and I had one farmer who said that his mental health was spiraling downwards and he said I'm trying to hold on to my fifth generation farm and I've got kids and I don't spend any time with my kids he said so I am you know stressed and on the edge of that dark sp space and I said what if you could be a stressed and engaged dad? Because he was building um, some homestay cottages, farmstay cottages. And I said, do you involve your children in what you're doing? And he said, no. I say, go on, go on. I've got too much to do. Go on, get out of here. And he said, what, engage them. I said, yes. So be, you know, <laughs> stressed, trying to do all that. That's totally appropriate. You're trying to save your farm and build these uh, cottages. Bring them in on it. And, um, he left and obviously he thought about it because I ran into his wife a couple of months later and she burst into tears and gave me a big hug. And I said, what's that about? And she said, my husband heard what you said at a talk one day and he became you know, stressed and engaged dad. And now he's got the kids on the tractor. They're saying, Where do you, you know, put this tree here, dad. We'll build those steps there, dad. And so... <laughs> You know, it has a whole different, makes me emotional. It's a whole different dynamic for this father and his children. And it took well, it's a It's life-changing, isn't it? I mean, it's totally. It just, 
flips it over like that, you know, and, um, you know, you can be angry at the pandemic and angry and in communication, you know, angry and responsible. Um, but, yeah, I think that's the thing with, um, well, even if we just look at 2020 from the bushfires, you know, because we've kind of, the whole country's been in some kind of, I hate using the word crisis, but we've we've had the bushfires, we've had mm -hmm. smoke, um, you know, which I completely forgot about until I watched something the other day and it reminded me that the tennis was, you know, impacted by the stroke. Of course, that's nothing to what people who were impacted by the fires. But yeah. then we've gone into this and then we know there's going to be an economic situation. It's not mm. like there's going to be a neat end to COVID and we all go back to normal life. Mm. And people are feeling so many different emotions. People who are actually dealing quite well during COVID and then are feeling guilty because they're, they're okay and other people are struggling. How have you seen language change or people use it differently during this time? Um, well, you know, you're talking about all those mood swings at the moment. And in, in that webinar, I look at the roller coaster of, of life. And so there's so many different words now attached to our languaging, you know, explaining how we're feeling. And the moods are coming at us again, like tsunamis at the moment. It's like, whoa, now I feel this, now I feel that. You just mentioned somebody is doing okay and all of a sudden guilt pops in there because they're doing better than their neighbour. You know, it's, it's this, this big you know, roller coaster ride. So um, the words attached with that, I, th I think being, um, being okay, it's okay to be okay. We, we know that, we say that, but to get it is another, another level. To actually be okay to stop, assess, you know, look at yourself on the roller coaster. Where are you? So that you can name uh, you know, how you are feeling at the moment. That's the first thing. And then you can give a word to it. Ah, I am feeling this way. I'm feeling anxious or I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling blessed and lucky that we're in this country called Australia where you know, I mean, I'm unemployed at the moment and I've never been unemployed since 19, gosh, 72. Um, but we just got our cheque from the Australian government the other day. Um, you know, you try waking up in Syria. You try waking up in some other war-torn country or in a country where there's dictatorships and, and there's no support for the people and they are rioting on the streets. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's an abundance of words being bandied around at the moment, lots of words around the, the COVID-19 pandemic itself. But the word that really is getting under my skin at the moment is pivoting. Everybody's pivoting at the moment. Uh, my husband and I have just been watching The Last Dance, you know, Michael Jordan's fantastic video series. And um, now I know pivoting has lots of different meanings, but I'm kind of in basketball mode here. And pivoting in basketball is one foot nailed to the floor and you're going like this, you know. And I really don't want to spend my life pivoting because I get vertigo, you know, <laughs> it makes me dizzy. And I think there's a lot of pivoting frenzy at the moment. Whereas, what do I do now? I could try that. Oh, what about that? And, 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 and just stop. Give yourself permission. It's one of the gifts from COVID-19. It gives you permission to just stop for a moment. Breathe. And then step back and reassess. You know, what is important to me in my life? You know, in my family, in my business? Who do I say I am? What are my values? You know, what's my purpose? I know every day what my purpose is because I made it up one day. And it's a fantastic exercise and I recommend, you know, people have a look at this. You find your purpose as if it's um, one of those banners outside of news agencies, you know, so it's 10 words or fewer. So my purpose is to be an irresistible invitation to fully participate in life to be you know to be an irresistible invitation so that that can occur anywhere that can occur on the phone that can occur you know uh, paying a toll somewhere um, buying a sandwich buying a coffee i'm trying to think of examples that are not pandemic ones and it's like coffee no don't do that anymore sandwich don't do that anymore um <laughs> But anything you're, you're you know, doing, any engagement you have with anyone, be that. And that's also appropriate for your business. Don't lose sight of what 
what gave you this, this, this desire in the first place and then look for ways to adjust, to, you know, just amend, to be creative around that. But don't lose sight of the whole purpose, the whole intent, the and reason that, you're being there. Absolutely. And I work with organisations um, on their events and anyone who's watched me in an interview or any of my webinars know for me, it all comes back to the purpose. So, you know, if it's an event and you've pivoted, pivoted it online, mm. you don't move the, the format online, you move the purpose. So, you know, if the purpose was to provide education and professional development and you happen to do that through a conference format, you don't yes. just move the conference online, you actually go back to the purpose. Exactly. And think, how can I deliver that online? And, mm. and I know a lot of businesses, particularly cafes and restaurants that had to to adapt almost overnight, and mm. know whether they're doing takeaway. A lot of them have assessed it during this time and, and they'll keep those elements. They're not going to just go back to being a, a dining restaurant because they've actually seen the opportunities. I mean, no one wanted mm. to go through this, but they're taking what they can out of a shocking situation yeah. and reflecting on what has worked, what hasn't, what they'll keep. And I think that's so important. Yeah. It's like this interview is a possibility you know, Georgie, who, who would have thought we were going to be connecting like this? We were going to wait for a coffee and to run into each other in Melbourne. Exactly. Well, this exactly. beats the hell out of that, doesn't it? You know, oh, we can I just know. go, hey, Georgie. <laughs> so, you know, so many times I've, I'm chatting even with just friends or um, colleagues saying, why haven't we done this earlier? Why? Yeah. And, and I know a lot of member organisations and, um, and there's one that I'm interviewing shortly where they have set up some membership online engagement networking groups Yes. That they'll continue out of, you know, even when people go back into the office. Yeah. They're sort of like, why didn't we do this earlier? Well, was um, so yesterday. I've been talking to those little children in remote, it was Cowra and beyond, you know, little play groups and, and children on isolated stations. And you could see their little faces all on the screen. And it was like, hello. And I was you know, reading Brittany and Whitney, the, the diva chooks and being a singing chook. And it was, it was absolute mayhem. And I had to pinch myself afterwards. And I couldn't stop laughing, you know, with joy. Yes. Afterwards, because I and, and again, you know, it's it's emotional. This is what life is about. It you is. know, somebody, an old woman sitting in Hobart on a couch being a singing chook, you know, for little children on these outback stations and, and in little playgroups that happen when some beautiful educators turn up in a van, you know, mobile play van. Yeah. Um that's that's the beauty of life. And yeah, um, that's what, you know, this pandemic has given us an opportunity to actually appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the other things, you know, not only that is that I've seen people out of this crisis, probably more than I've seen out of natural disaster ones, but mm. I'm also saying that as an observer because I haven't been in a natural disaster, but people are being a lot more vulnerable um, and they're being a lot more open with their language and, you know, whether it's on LinkedIn and people are being really open about I'm not coping, I had to take a day off or, you know, I have to take time out. People who I've never seen open up, you know, some prominent leaders, um, people who've always sort of put on that social media facade of mm. this is all, you know, I'm loving what I'm doing and everything is rosy. But it, people are using language a lot more and, and even in my book club, which we've gone online with the Zoom, yes. we've been a lot more open in how we're feeling. Like we're actually saying, I'm really struggling or I'm really mm. down or I'm really sad or I'm happy. Like it's, I find people are using language a lot more than yes. they have before this. Yes, to define those moods and the, those emotions. Absolutely. It's like um, I mean, you're familiar and a lot of the people watching will be from not-for-profits and charity organisations, you know, and my heart goes out to you all because it's really tough out there, fundraising and delivering the services that, that, that have you be in this wonderful organisation. Um, but just recently with, with Make-A-Wish, um, I mean, the sad thing is 80% of our children have had their wishes you know, held back, postponed, because they involve travel or groups of people. And these are vulnerable children with uh, critical illnesses. So we did a, a virtual webinar, a workshop with the staff of Apple last week, uh, because they've been a supporter since 2015, and they've granted 30 million wishes so far. And we took them into the conversation, which is part of our wish journey called the anticipation phase. 
Now, this is where we don't give the wish instantly because children are often going through treatment, but this is where they're looking forward to. You know, the, the, the yearning, the dreaming, the imagination about it. And so Apple teams right now, I've got three weeks to work on anticipation exercises um, to help our children who are waiting, you know, grab hold of that anticipation in a more powerful way through their amazing creativity at yeah. Apple and, uh, you know, their devices and all the things that they're going to come up with. So that's you know, a way of taking a situation that is hard, it is tough, it is sad. It, that's the real part of it. And finding that way through where you, you keep the essence of everything that matters to you and just push through into that new, new way of being um, in that situation. It doesn't mean that it's not tough. Still is tough. But tough and available for a miracle, I always say. You know, open for possibility. Gosh, and anticipation. I mean, that's, that's such a... <laughs> We're probably all in that phase at the moment. Yeah, and, and it's, it's powerful. If you can harness it, uh, it's very, very powerful. I mean, if you look at some, some tips, you know, for just daily living, um, I always go to the, the past, the present, and the future. So what I do, I honour the past. So every day when I wake up, uh, yesterday was yesterday. And I honour it. I turn around and go, yesterday, yep, that's what's happened yesterday. Like, Mwah, thank you, yesterday. That worked, that didn't, yep. And then you put a big red bow about it and you turn around and now you're in the, the now. But, you know, use gratitude. That's how you honour the past. Find the gratitude. The present, and that's where we get back to, you know, every day you wake up, it's your first second and you get to be the author of who you're going to be. So, you know, what is your purpose? What is your word for today? I mean, I've... Uh, on the webinar, I show a great big list of words and um, some of my clients actually ask me for the list. And, uh, you know, they cut the words out and put them in a bucket and their staff just every day when they come into work, they pick out a word if they can't invent one for themselves. And then you know, it might be joyful. You know, it might be listening. It might be um, appreciation. It could be trust. And they take on being that word. You know, so, and that's in the, in, the, in the now, is laughter. You know, find something that makes you laugh. I mean, got this endless sketches and material on the web at the moment to, to, to give you a laugh. Go searching if you need a laugh and have a real good belly laugh. Our family's tonic to laughter is at Christmas time when we all play the game of things. Now, I can't recommend this game more if you possibly can get your hands on the game of things, if you can't on the, on the web, it'll give you the questions anyway. And I'm sure that the, the creators won't mind during the pandemic if you actually download the questions. And it's just a, a group of people saying, um, the thing you don't say in a job interview, and people write down all of these things, and you've got to guess who said it. It is absolutely hysterical. I mean, I met my, uh, my son's parents-in-law We'd never met them before in America. We played for four hours and we were honestly almost sick from laughing. And we bonded so powerfully through that game. It was lovely and um, it's very good for you. So that's the present, you know, finding which word and laughter. And the future, that's where that anticipation comes in. Always have something that you're going to look forward to every day with your family, with your, your teams, your staff, yourself. Now, my husband and I, we're, we're old now. You know, we're in the, in the quickening of our life. You know, I turned 70 this year. So um, what we look forward to, the moment we wake up, we have a game where we say, ah, only 15 hours till bedtime. <laughs> because I never slept so much in my life. You know, I'm, I'm a busy woman racing around on planes. I'm normally, you know, I get to bed at about 2 o'clock in the morning and then I'm up and pushing through. Um, now I'm in bed by 10. I read delicious magazine. I tear out recipes, you know, and bed has become this lovely thing to look forward to. But find something. And so we're cooking or nurturing or gardening or something to look forward to is really healing. You know, in Make-A-Wish, um, the anticipation phase helps our children through their treatment. They respond better to treatment uh, when they're looking forward to something. And in Spain, um, when a child's not responding to treatment, the doctors have started to recommend uh, a Make-A-Wish 
wish. So that's the power of anticipation. Gosh, it is so powerful. And yeah. I know a lot of organisations, here goes our roadworks, uh, it, it, like a lot of volunteer managers at the moment are really struggling because they don't know, A, when their programs will return, mm -hmm. B, if they will actually return. Yes. So they've got that anticipation. The volunteer, you know, workforce um, have got that anticipation of when can I start again? We've got you know, sports clubs, um, community mm. clubs of that anticipation of when can we open, when mm. can we come back together as a community? So there's so many people managing those different layers of anticipation. And yes. it just shows how in, how powerful words can be during that anticipation to turn it into a, a positive. That's um, right. With action. I mean, it's got to be accompanied with that action where if it's a sports club, then you do paint your, your clubhouse. You do reno, reno work. You do make the gardens and the landscaping really fantastic so that when people get there, they go, ah, look at the clubhouse, you know. Um, so put that anticipation. That's what we want. That's what we're looking forward to. Now, what do we build in there? to get to that. And that's literally what we do in Make-A-Wish. I mean, my latest little wish child, um, she wants to go glamping at Taronga uh, Western Plains Zoo. And so we've been sending her little photos of the animals, you know, just saying, where are all the people? Where are all the people? Oh, they've got to stay inside and be safe, you know, for a while. <laughs> so the little message is coming from the animals. Yeah, I love that. And, and I know a lot of volunteer managers and, and sports clubs are just doing little things not little things but simple things but significant to just keep in touch with their members or their you know volunteer network or their supporters or their donors yeah. through this time because we don't want silence you know it's no no you don't want you don't want interaction. so powerful to keep that connection and yeah yeah and every day i mean i don't know i probably didn't didn't create much i didn't i didn't earn anything yesterday but i went to bed um being a word that a little boy gave me and i share about it in the webinar i went to bed feeling lifeful mm. um, because every interaction every conversation i had with my husband was lifeful i mean our younger son is an architect and he's building um, our house at the moment he's designed it and so conversations with him i was just in awe you know, who he is and texting my other son who's an actor in New York right in the thick of the, the pandemic uh, in Brooklyn in a cluster group um, and just buoying, buoying him up, you know, and then talking to the Outback kids and cooking a nice meal. Like every little part of that day had intent and the intent is one that I choose. COVID-19 had nothing, no say. It had no say. In who I was being, I'm, I'm the master of that, you know, so I was the author. And, and um, it's simple, you know, it can be, it, it's, it's very simple and extremely deeply, profoundly powerful. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love as those simple things, you know, you're the author. Um, mm -hmm. I have a word that I struggle with and I overuse it, yeah. but it's, um, I don't use it in a negative way, but it's interpreted in a negative way so, so people will often say to me oh how are you and I'll say oh I'm really busy but I love being busy because I love what I do so yes. when I'm busy I'm at my happiest and yes. and people who know my logo has a border collie and that's because border yes. collie is working yes. and they're happy yes. when they're working so they yes. but people take that as a you know oh she's busy you know oh we hear she's busy yes. so I've tried to sort of work out how do I say like I'm fulfilled you know I mean it sounds a bit funny if they say how are you and I say I'm fulfilled but yes. I'm but I end up saying I'm busy, but I'm loving it. Like yes, I'm busy and. Take the but out. Because yes. the but is that negative. Yes. Busy, busy and loving it. Busy and you loving know, it. That's my takeaway from today. That simple change will make the world of difference. Because I kept yes. feeling I had to justify, but I'm okay being busy, you know. Yeah. And look, and tell, become a storyteller too. Like even yes. bypass busy and loving it. How are you today? Oh, you, you'll never guess what just happened. You know, like I, I rang my manager straight after the being a singing chook yesterday and I, I just said, oh, Simone, brah, brah. I said, I've just been a singing chook reading this book to these lovely children. And it was just that the story took over. So you don't even have to mention busy. It's, uh, you know, a great and, and let me tell you, 
been working with these lovely clubs, been working with these volunteers. Oh my goodness, you know, Mel Melby told me that this story. And, and just be a storyteller on legs because you don't know the difference that story is going to make to somebody else. And it's not with, you know, any intent to fix them up or take their sour face away. And you'll know, you know, use your intuition too and be empathetic. If that's not appropriate, if somebody's downhearted, then it's not appropriate to, to go, well, you'll never guess what I did today, you know. Um, yeah. It's like, you're looking, looking sad. How, how are you doing? Yeah. I mean, be empathetic. So you can't vomit over people with their enthusiasm. And you're, you're very intuitive, and so are our, our viewers are very intuitive. They'll, they'll know how to handle that. Uh, yeah, and and now more than ever, because everyone's going through their their roller coaster mm. with a different time. So, you know, yeah. I'll have a friend that one day is, you know, fantastic, loving it. I'm having a down day. The yeah. next day, I'm back up, and she's down. Like, <laughs> but everyone around you is their yeah. roller coasters on the dips, and yeah. the, you know, the peaks at different times. So you've got to be really in tune to that. And and if you're managing teams. Mm. Your team's going to be going through, they're all going to be on their, you know, peaks and, and dips at different times too. That's why I, I get with all my clients to do it, a roller coaster dry, diagram and put it on the fridge and then in the staff room and get everybody to get a fridge magnet so that it's, it's out there, you know, how, how am I feeling? But, but as I said in, in the webinar, I mean, it can, it, it can be so fickle, you know, if I look at, oh my gosh, I'm unemployed. Well, you could be down about that. And then all of a sudden, you're talking to one of your clients in a Zoom and it's like, oh, God, I feel fantastic now. I mean, it, it's, it's all over the place, you know, or I just had a nice cuddle. Exactly. My... And look, I've got friends, you know, my friends and I are pretty open with each other. So we'll actually ring and say, I'm having a down day. I just need to yes. talk about Harry and Megan or I just need to talk about the, yes. you know, latest episode of Shit's Creek or something. Yes. And we're yes. actually probably a lot more in tune to, okay, what do I need to do? Yeah. when I'm on my down to get back up mm. and we know we don't have to be up the whole time. So we acknowledge it's okay to be down, yeah. but we know our little sort of strategies that I think, well, I don't think, I know we've become much more in tune to during this time. And it's wonderful that, see, you've let the down be there. Yes. We're, all, we're all pushing against, oh, I shouldn't be feeling like that. I should be a, an enlightened person. No. I mean, somebody was texting me the other night, oh, Gosh, it was 8.30 and I was going to watch another Michael Jordan episode with my hubby. And, um, and it needed a long conversation and I made a choice. No, I want to be with my husband. And I just said, I'm spent after a big day today because we'd just done the Apple webinar and, um, and I'm going to watch this, this show, but I'll call you tomorrow. And they, they texted back, oh, you are human after all. I thought you would never be spent and it was like this terrible thing as I was suicidal and I said no I'm just I've given everything away and now I'm choosing to do that this is not a bad thing it's just my little buckets empty and I'm ready now to be relaxed at home on the couch you know that's totally appropriate so exactly. was value judgment about you know oh you should always have your red cape on this Stent is okay. We we have no energy sometimes because we've given it to everybody else. Exactly. And yeah. people are. I'm finding people are being a lot more honest about that. So they'll say, mm -hmm. I'm "Feeling down today? I can't chat. I'm just not in the mood." Yeah. I'll ring tomorrow. Rather than thinking, mm -hmm. "Oh, I better ring back," and I better, better do pull this. myself up. Yeah. No. Exactly. And and that again, give it a time limit. I remember yeah. um, I used to work on morning television years ago, and we moved to Tassie. And I said to the people, oh, look, don't worry. I, I'm, I know I'm a couple of states away, but I'll fly myself up to Sydney and you won't even know I'm not there. And I hadn't heard, hadn't heard when the show was starting again. And um, I, I rang, I said, when, when's the show starting? And they said, oh, oh, didn't anybody tell you? Um, <laughs> you're not in it anymore. <laughs> and it was like, oh, we just moved, you know, three states from Sydney to you know, Tassie, Tassie. We bought a new house. Our children were in school. And I, I just lost our, our income had just gone. Yeah. And, um, and my husband said, oh my God, what are we going to do? Now I'm just at this now because I've been speaking for 25 years about these distinctions. And I said, so what am I going to do? I said, 
I'm going to pour, it was about two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I, I said, I'm going to pour a glass of wine and I'm going to sit on the couch and look out over our beautiful Hobart water view. I'm going to make a few people wrong for half an hour and then I'm going to invent what's next. <laughs> so it was like, this is how I'm feeling. I need the wine and dinner and I'm going to make some people wrong and I'll, you know, start to think after that. But just having given it that half an hour in my speaking, I'd already started to think of great ideas. Yes. When you say I'm down and I think it should last for about, well, 10 minutes. No, that's not long enough. I think probably two hours would be good. Or maybe half a day. I'm, yeah, I'm going to be down for half a day. I mean, it, it's, it's a great strategy. Now, this is not for people who are depressed, yes. okay? This is for people whose mood is down. It's a great strategy with teenagers. I used to use it with my sons if they were having a bit of a grumpy day. And I just say, look, I'm going up the street. Um, how long do you think this is going to last? So that you know, I could sort of wander around a bit longer if it's going to be too long. And <laughs> I say, what's the time? Half an hour, two hours a day? And, and we'd burst out laughing. I love that. I love it's that. Walking around the mood with the stick and poking it. And but what not, happens is the humour comes in. When you let it be there, laughter has a place to be. And it's also, like you said, with acknowledging and recognising the past. So acknowledging the day that came before, tying it up with the ribbon, it's doing that with our moods. Yeah, that's it. That was totally appropriate, valid. I'm a human being. That's how I felt. Full stop, yeah. rule off. Good. Yeah. Give myself as much time as I want. When it becomes a nuisance back into your life again who am I going to be what mattered to me what did I say my intent was what's my purpose okay off off and running you know and and it will be like your you know little fetching dog there it'll be you know and during this time there's going to be a little dog yapping at your heels and you'll be exactly. pulled back down I mean you know the other day I did something and I didn't hear back from anybody to see how it went you know and I'm and you like to know oh that that was that that was valuable and, and, and there was no, no feedback. And, you know, as the day went on, it was like, oh, I wonder if, oh, maybe I should have, oh, dear, well, I, I thought it was okay, but maybe it wasn't. You know, and all of this, yeah, blah, 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 came. And I just thought, no, just take all of that conversation, put it here and then throw it away. And it was lovely. I literally felt that conversation go. And, it, and I know some people will be thinking that's a bit wanky. But it doesn't matter. If it works for you, do it. Some people yep. write it on a little bit of paper and put it in a box. Anything yep. that works for you, you know, and it just do it. Yeah. Oh, Robin, I could talk to you all day. Oh, um, long um, coffee. It's nice, isn't it? Have a <laughs> Thank you so much. This has been so great. And I know my takeaway is I'm going to turn that butt. So I'm busy and mm -hmm. happy or I'm stressed and Yes, and is the magic changing, word. I'm taking that, moving that butt to, a chain, uh, to an end. I'm going to change that. Um, if you could give one little tip that, you know, perhaps someone who, you know, who's roll, riding that roller coaster yeah. and, and even that anticipation of the economic impact we're about to go into, what's yes. one thing you'd, you know, simple thing that people could do to um, just do change their language during this time? Well, um, allow yourself to be on the roller coaster ride. Be on the ride. I remember once there was a conference up at um, SeaWorld. And, you know, and you've probably had events at SeaWorld. There's a conference with about 150 people. So we had the whole place to ourselves. I've always been terrified of roller coasters. So here was my big opportunity to have a breakthrough. So I thought, right, I don't have to queue up. I can go on the roller coaster ride as much as I want. So the first time I get on, I'm white knuckling, I'm screaming, close my eyes, didn't, you know, miss the entire thing. So that I went on again and, and I, let, I didn't hang on as tightly. I just held, held on. And, you know, I went through all this process until I was just hanging on safely and I kept my eyes open and I didn't utter a sound. And it was so exhilarating because I was going, oh, look. Gee, I can, I can see that from up here. Oh, you know. <laughs> so what happened was I had clarity. I was present. You know, I could make some choices up there about, I actually enjoyed it. That wasn't terror. Terror didn't intervene and take the entire experience away. It would be sad to come to the end of this pandemic and say, I missed it. 
I think that would be that would be a great loss. Um, you know, get it. Be, be be in the dash thing. Don't don't get the don't get the virus, but hold on. Keep your eyes open. Don't scream. You know, and just observe all of the things like the new normal. You know, I'm meditating every day, and that's not going to stop. Um, Gosh, that's so powerful, isn't it? Just that. Yeah. Recognize. I didn't have time. Didn't have time before. And Deepak yeah. Chopra's rule in their centers, um, what is it? Wake, we meditate. That's that's the key to it. Wake, we meditate. Don't don't look at your phone. Don't yeah. go to your computer. Don't have breakfast. Don't do it. Just those three things. Yeah. And, and walking. You know, back to walking again. Um, so when you when you're on on the ride, you have this this depth and breadth of experiences. We had a potteroo in our backyard. You know, me on planes all the time. He probably has been in our backyard over the years. I've never seen it. Now I see the potteroo in the backyard. And it's that clarity, isn't it? That's such yeah. a powerful thing, clarity. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, Robin, it's been so great to chat to you. Lovely. Um, and I know lovely. I've got so much out of this, so I know everyone else will. Um, yeah. And it's been really great to have you. And I look forward to when we finally get to see each other in person and keep yeah. having Loves. <laughs> yeah, we'll do a big running together, slow motion, exactly. and we'll hug. Hug. Air high fives or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, have a wonderful day in Hobart, and we'll chat again soon. Okay, thanks, Joe. Bye. Bye.